Hey lovies, welcome to my channel, Craft Away with May. I'm May. Welcome to my old and new subbies. I'm so glad to have you all here with me today is the thumbnail show. We are going to be using some Dollar Tree items to make us some awesome fall decor. Now, our theme for today, guys, we are going to be incorporating mushrooms throughout each project you know i did ask the question i shared with you guys that i wanted to do some mushroom um items and you guys were totally on board with that so i am here to deliver we're starting out with this first piece from dollar tree this is the milk jug they come out with this every year um i don't work with it very often just because guys i am not a fan of of like just going over the back part or the front parts of the signs and stuff like that and this one is actually kind of cute at first I thought I was going to make it into a two-sided sign but I just opted to use the back of it because it was a smooth surface and I'm lazy when it comes to crafting I didn't feel like covering it up and all that other stuff but if you choose to recreate this by all means do whatever makes your heart happy and you know push it out accordingly <laughs> so here i'm just taking some of this patch fabric that i got from hobby lobby if you've been with me anytime you know i love patch fabric i just thought you know this was so cute and perfect for the fall and i just put that on using some eileen's tacky glue i put it to this well i didn't put it to the side but i'm gonna let it dry and now you see i'm going in with some of my silver paint it's the sheen paint by folk art i think or deco art one of the two i can't remember but that first coat is very thin once it dries i decide to go in with some mineral chalk um, paint by waverly and then i go over with another coat of that silver paint to get this the shine the sheen that i want and the reason i did that is because as you saw early on i did remove the handles or the little silver pieces from the front of the side and i'm going to be adding those back in so and i wanted it to match and right here i just took a few colors and mixed them together i used the maize color by waverly as well as some orange color paint it was sun it was some kind of sunset color by folk art and i can't remember the name of it and i added in some burnt umber and I just kept mixing that until I got the color that I desired, which was kind of similar to the yellow in this fabric. It was a little bit lighter, but um, I think I came pretty close with it. So I was pleased with the turnout of that. Once my cloth or fabric, <laughs> once it dried, I went ahead and cut it down. As you can see, I'm doing right here, guys. And everything is pretty self-explanatory as always. I'm sanding down that fabric. Now, a lot of people don't choose to do that, but I mean, I have no problems with that. So here's our first mushroom. Now, I did get this from Michael's either this year or last year. I can't remember, but I'm just paint painting it in some, some of that um, orange color paint and then the stem in the burnt umber and I am going to cut the little stake off the bottom of it and uh, because I got so caught up in my crafts I totally forgot that I wanted to add a rub on to the mushroom so I did keep it as is for now but it's an easy fix so here's where you see I'm going back in and I'm adding the I'm adding the little silver handles back so next I have this little banner from Hobby Lobby that I got for 40% off it says blessed on it and here I was just playing around with the placement and I kind of wish I had left it just as is when I had it hanging there at the top but for whatever reason my brain was like no may move it down <laughs> So that's what I did and it's not bad or anything like that but it just I feel like you can't see it as much in person you can see it you can see the word blessed but I do like you know once I I was going through the voice over here for you guys I did like the way it was hanging but anyway you can always move it around it's no big whoop so once i do that i just tack it down with some hot glue i don't use any other glue other than hot glue and eileen's tacky glue today 
and once I get that where I want it I trim everything down I add in the ribbon just as you saw how I laid it out there and again I really like the way this came together I just wish I had switched the two around but at the end of the day I just love this it was giving all of the country farmhouse vibes to me especially using that patch fabric and adding that mushroom at the bottom and what I wanted to do here was take this pick that I got from Hobby Lobby and I just took a few sprigs of it off and I'm just gonna bundle them together. You'll see I'm doing right here and I'm just tying that off with some jute twine to make sure it's nice and secure. And once I get that going, I only go around it once. I Normally I'll go um, I'll wrap the bundle like twice when I do this, but I felt like once was sufficient. So um, once I get it all um, wrapped up and glued off, I'm just going to trim off the little excess at the bottom. I mean, you know, it is what it is, not necessary, but it had one little piece poking out there. So I just decided to trim it off. But look at the little mushroom on there. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I thought it was so adorable. I'm so bummed that I forgot to add in the rub on on there. But anyway, like I said, it's an easy fix. I can always go at it after afterwards. And I still didn't think about it um, until I was doing my uh, um, the final reveal. And then that's where I was like, oh man, I forgot to put the rub on transfer. But anyway, enough of me whining about that. <laughs> I forgot. So here, as you can see, I just hot glued that down, taping it off to make sure it stays in place. And what I decided to do to cover up the little hole where the jute twin, jute twin, jute twine stringer, oh my goodness, where the jute twine was hanging. <laughs> I'm taking some of these scrap pieces of florals that I had, and I'm just going to put them over to make them appear as if they're hanging over our vase here. So I really love this. And I think these are called milk jugs. I think so, these are the milk jug ones. I think, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I think they are milk jugs. But anyway, I'm making it into a vase. And once I do that, I get it all fluffed out. And that's it for project number one. Now we're going on into project number two. And guys, if you have a favorite of today, let me know. You know, I know we're just getting started, but still, you never know. You might have thought number one was your favorite already. <laughs> So next up, we have this beautiful paper. It's decoupage paper that I got from my sweet friend Brandy over at the DIY Struggle. She sent me a whole bundle of her new um, fall line, um, including some of this beautiful decoupage paper and some gorgeous rub-on transfers that I was hoping to use in this video, but did not get the opportunity. Time did not allow, um, but I am so excited about that to come. Anyway, what you see I'm doing here is I'm just trimming it down and um, I just wanted to cut off the white pieces of this of the paper. Now I will, oh I'm sorry, I will have um, Brandy's website in my description box because, um, so you guys can check her out. She's so affordable and she does beautiful work. She, design, she designs these pieces herself and I absolutely love working with them. If you've been here with me anytime, you know this is not my first time using them, but the end result is always gorgeous. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking this um, shadow box or wood piece, wood hanging piece that you can find in Hobby Lobby. It comes, I think, five in a pack and I usually get them when they're 40% off. So I only pay around about eight or nine bucks for them. But I'm using this rose color, um, rose gold color by Crab Smart that I got from Michaels. It was on clearance for a dollar. And I'm just going in, uh, you know, around the border with it. I did use some painter's tape to keep it from getting on the main surface here. Um, but it was really, you know, I didn't even have to paint, um, uh, put the tape down because I am going to end up covering those parts that you can see. So just like our first project, I just went in with some of my Eileen's Tacky Glue, spread that out, and then I just kept going accordingly until I got full coverage here and I am using my brayer to push out any of the bubbles or wrinkles here and on this particular one I wasn't too concerned if I got wrinkles I don't mind the wrinkles I think it adds character to my projects you know but to each his own when you're doing decoupage you know there are so many different likes and dislikes with it but do what makes your heart happy at the end of the day 
So here I thought I was having a genius moment, guys. And I decided to take some of my jute twine and some of this. It's like a, a deep red color. It looks pretty bright on camera, but it is actually kind of a deep red color. I think it's engine red or something like that by folk art, but I can't remember. But anyway, I was having a moment where I thought I was being, um, you know, smart and painting it red. And I quickly realized like, no, I don't like that. So, <laughs> so I just flipped it over, went with the original color of it <laughs> and used that as an outline on the inside of this picture. Now, right here is where I probably should have just left this as is. I didn't really need to add anything else to it. But the way my mind works, it doesn't always do that. It doesn't just say stop. <laughs> Here's enough. You've done enough. Just stop. <laughs> it's somewhere in the back of my mind saying that. You know, kind of like a subliminal message that's saying, hey, don't do that. But I don't always listen to that part of my brain. So I decided to take some of these maple leaves. It comes like a million in a pack from Hobby Lobby. And they were $2.99 originally priced, but I got them for 40% off. So I really paid practically nothing for them. But I'm adding in a hanger on the back because I wasn't sure if I was going to use this as a leaner or a hanger. But I'm like, what can it hurt to add the shoe twine to the back? You know, either way it goes, you won't see it. So I decided to do that. And right here is like, okay, we're going to keep going some more. So I think... <laughs> grab some of these pumpkins that you can find at Hobby Lobby as well right now and um, they also have the fall leaves so I grabbed three of the pumpkins and I'm just painting it in that deep red color I'm using this green color by folk art I think it's called clover and then I'm gonna go in with some orange color paint by folk art as well it's some type of sunset color guys and I'm sorry I don't remember these things I'll look at the colors when I'm starting with them but by the time I come to do my voiceover um, yeah that that's long gone I can't remember what I use so but use any colors of your choice if you decide to recreate this so I do distress them a little bit with the excess paint that I had left over which was a combination of that green and orange and I do like the way those pumpkins came out um, here I was just going in for the placement of these and afterwards again as soon as I finished this I was just like you should not have added anything else to this piece, May. <laughs> Why did you do that? So, anyway, once I get <laughs> them where I like them, I glue them down. Just using some hot glue. Now, I could totally remove these because I didn't use anything stronger here. But, yeah, that's what I did for that piece. And now we're moving on to project number three. And I absolutely adore this piece. It is so simple, but I thought it was absolutely just cute it was super super cute so it is a shelf sitter that i'm doing here and i'm just going in with some of my burnt umber paint and i'm just using that as a stain that is my preference if you haven't been here with me anytime i do prefer to use burnt, um, burnt umber by apple barrel to stain my wood i just like the end result of it so next i'm taking some of these little mushrooms that i um i don't know where i got these from I can't remember if I got them from Hobby Lobby, if I ordered them offline. I really don't know where they came from, but they were in my stash. So I decided to roll with them. So next I'm going in with these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. And I'm so excited about them, guys. I am so excited. I got these. I got um, some from my sweet friend, Kathy Joe, Kathy Joe DIYs, and my sweet friend, Ro, from Craftacular sent me some. They felt my pain. They were tired of me crying, and they was like, let me just get this girl some of these rub-on transfers so she can shut up. <laughs> no, they didn't. They did not do that. They were just happy to send me some, and I was happy to receive them. So, yes, I'm going to use them until I can't use them to no more. I hope I don't use them all up, though. <laughs> But anyway, I distressed the inside of this box using some of that paint mixture that um, I used on my first project here. And I was a little concerned that that rub-on transfer wasn't going to show up. But as you saw there, it did come through pretty nicely. So next, the little mushrooms had some holes at the top. And I'm just stuffing these little scrap floral pieces right down in there to kind of make them like some blooming mushrooms. Yes, blooming mushrooms. I thought this was absolutely adorable guys so here i'm just showing you giving you an idea of how i'm gonna lay it out but because i had to sit this upright and i know you guys wouldn't see it i'm not gonna do it exactly like that i'm gonna give it a little bit of spacing so you can see the um forward in the background there and i thought 
This one's so cute. Now, if you choose to recreate this, you could totally add fairy lights in there. I think that would be absolutely adorable as well. But I opted just to just leave this as is. I think this is going to be such a cute shelf sitter for the fall season. So next, I'm taking one of these bows from Dollar Tree. Now this is my first time I think seeing this um, plaid print bow. I love the colors. Now I was a little concerned that maybe that red was or it was more like a burgundy but it did have hints of red in it and I thought maybe it would throw it off but it actually came together really cute guys. I thought this was like a fall present. A mushroom present for you guys. A gift from me to you. <laughs> I hope you receive it. <laughs> all right lovey so we're moving on into our next project and this is i believe our final project of the day and it is my favorite this one in particular with the orange now that red one i do go in and change that color to yellow just because i wasn't feeling the red on this one and that was because of the rub on i was going to use so once I get that repainted in the yellow color, I just go in with some distressing using my burnt umber and I'm just going to go around that until I get it to a desired look that I like. And then I'm just going to take it down to the stem and darken that up a little bit. Again, just because of the rub on transfer I'm going to be using with this particular one, I felt like the colors need to be a little darker. So here I'm using these rub on transfers that I got from Amazon. And I love this owl. When I got this pack, I was itching, guys. I was just itching to use this particular one. <laughs> Because I love the owl. It's the mama and the baby together. And I was like, this is so pretty. And I kept thinking, I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to have to wait till winter to use this one or the Christmas season. But I was like, no, we're going to make this work for fall. We're going to make this work some kind of way. And so when I put it up against the orange color, I was like, it's working. I feel it. I'm getting that vibe. <laughs> it's coming through. And I love it. I love the way this came together. This is so pretty. So here I'm just taking the little excess that went over on this one. I'm going to sand it, give it a quick sanding because it was not a lot. It was almost a perfect fit to be perfectly honest. And so next I'm going to end with some more of the Dollar Tree rub on transfers for the yellow one. Again, loving these. I am so mad that my Dollar Trees never brought these out here, but you know, it is what it is. I got them, but still, you know, these were absolutely beautiful and I love them. And look how pretty that one is. I love this one too. Um, they, like I said, these are my, my favorites of today. I know they're very simple, but yet I really do like the way they came together. So what you see I'm doing here next is just taking a little bit of jute twine and I'm wrapping it around the base of this particular mushroom. And I only go around a few times. That's it. And once I get it to um, the look I want, I just glue it off and snip off that excess. And off camera, I'm going to show you guys a quick clip of it, of what I do. But here I'm going in with one of my Kathy Jo bows, giving it some dovetails. And I of toes I <laughs> dove tails <laughs> and putting it right at the bottom isn't that cute tell me that's not cute I think that's so adorable oh my goodness I love this I love these two mushrooms but here is where I'm using I don't know what color paint that is either but I take one of the little maple leaves and I'm going to put that right at the bottom I just forgot to show it but here we are with the final reveal guys if you are still here riding with me thank you so much I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart loveys you know without you guys there would not be a craft away with my channel and I love each and every one of you guys I love that you come back to hang out with me week, each week. I'm sorry my videos have been a little bit off. But again, as I've shared, you know, things are going on. But all is well. So hopefully we'll get back on schedule. And also, guys, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting. Keep those comments coming because you know I love to chat with you guys after each and every video. And also, guys... Put your reminders up for Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time because I have a special video coming up, one that I'm so excited about. It's one that I've been wanting to do for a while. So I hope you guys will tune in. And until the next video, lovies, be safe, be kind.
Happy crafting your days away. Hugs and kisses. XOXO. Bye.